Windy Bay. Good Scottish weather, Windy Bay. Nah, we're always sunny. Okay, do you want us to kick us off? Charlie? Good afternoon, David. Um, well, earlier on, I was at training. It, it did look like you've got your whole squad available for tomorrow's game, but can, can you just confirm if you've got any injuries? No, we've got everybody available, uh, everybody fit and ready to play, so looking forward to it. We believe Edson Alvarez is suspended for tomorrow's match. Correct, that's right. I just wanted to ask, um, he obviously came off against Man City. I think the fans were very worried, uh, but of course he has been training today. I just wondered, um, how big a boost is it that he hasn't suffered anything serious, given just how late he came back from America? I don't think MD thought he had any injury. I think he's still getting used to the, the 90 minutes in the Premier League and what's entailed in it. Uh, he's probably had that in a few games where he's been fatigued late on. And... Uh, he was at the weekend, but he also had got booked early in the game, which also was on my mind as well, that I had to be careful of it. So, uh, yeah, but he's fine. He's uh, he's fit and healthy and, and, and all well. We saw Mohamed Kudos out there training today. Um, mm. He hasn't yet made his first West Ham start. Uh, what have you seen uh, from him in training? I mean, what have you made of his performances in training so far? Uh, I like what I see. I think that... Uh, I think he looks a really good player, and from what we've seen before, we, we that's why we bought him. And uh, hopefully, he'll get an opportunity to show what he can do over the next uh, next few weeks. But uh, you know, we've got to give some of them time to settle in. Thankfully, you know, Edson and James Ward Prowse have settled in really, really quickly. And uh, Mo's just been a little bit late, right at the end of the window, really, when we got Mo in. So we've got to try and give him a little bit of time. Don't expect too much from him too soon. Thomas was just in here and he said he feels that West Ham, given the Europa Conference League win last season, are now thought of as one of the favourites to win the Europa League this season. What are your thoughts on that? I think you need to look at the teams in the Europa League. I think that uh, I think the European competitions have got tougher. I think uh, so many teams who are regular, pre uh, regular uh, Champions League teams have found themselves in the Europa League and quite a lot of teams who are in the Europa League have found themselves in the Conference League. So... I think the strength of the European football is really, really strong. Uh, I think, obviously, the Champions League is always the one we you know you want to be recognised for, but I think it's great that we've got the Europa League. We're, we're thrilled that we're in it again, uh, two years out of three now. And uh, I do believe that the competition's got tougher than when we were in it two years ago. Thanks, David. <clears throat> Hi, David. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm just moving on from that. I mean, obviously, you've got Liverpool, Brighton... Rangers in this competition, it's it's not going to be as easy as two years ago where you got to the semi final. Not that that was particularly easy. No, I agree. I think that I think the as I said earlier, the European competitions I believe have got tougher. You know, for the example, to have Liverpool and Brighton out the Premier League in in a competition you're in, and you can see the form that Brighton are in and the history what Liverpool have had in European football over many years. It gives you just talking about the British teams. Never mind the teams that are. What are uh, you know from other countries, and you've also got to remember that we're waiting on whoever finishes third in the group for the the Champions League drops back into this competition as well. So, I mean, to in any way to be talking about who could be favourite, etc., is is not really worthwhile because until we see the teams who drop down and the teams who qualify, it's very very difficult to work out. Over the past two years, you you've taken <clears> Europe in inverted commas very seriously. You played. Strong teams, you won every single game to make sure you top the group and you miss out yep. on that qualifying tie. Um, this week you play three games in a week. Do you prioritise the game tomorrow or do you prioritise Liverpool or do you prioritise Lincoln or, or, or how do you think about how you're going to get the makeup of your team right for all three games? Well, the, the first and foremost will always be the Premier League, will always be the most important thing to try and make sure that you're always a Premier League club because that's roughly where, where most of the money is. <coughs> excuse me, comes from. But Europe's been so good. I mean, Europe is a, it probably, if I was going to put it in financial terms, is the most important competition after the Premier League, really, how well you can do in Europe, how far you can go. So from that point of view, obviously, we want to target both. So the balance of that being a, a club that plays on a, a Thursday and a Sunday probably is never easy. The Thursday Sunday games for wh for whatever reason, but over the last two seasons we've done it quite well. You know, a, a final and a semi final the year before that. So we'll try and get the balance right. Uh, 
always the most important game is the next one in, in my eyes. You're always trying to win the next game. The next game's uh, on Thursday night and we'll try and do that. Finally from me, we, we saw last night after Newcastle's draw um, in Milan, which on paper looks a, a, a great result, and yet the manager <coughs> Eddie Howe has to come in and defend the way his team played because people thought they were lucky and they weren't attacking enough. Um, firstly, does that happen to you? And secondly, do you actually care what we think about how your team plays? Yeah, we do care. We want, we want, we want our teams to be exciting. We want them to be, uh, you know, to to play well. But ultimately, we want to win and we want to get good results. And I think it would be more naive of MD who thought that that result that Newcastle got at Milan was a bad one. I would say that the people who were talking in those terms were the ones who, who had less understanding of the game. Hi, David. Um, last year, the Conference League was used really as a momentum builder because the league wasn't going as well. You've started the league very well this year. Do, mm -hmm. you, do you think you can almost maybe enjoy this group stage a bit more because you're not having to win mm -hmm. games to prove and, 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 to, and to kind of counter the, the poor league form? Yeah, yeah I, get, I get the point. If you remember last year, we had qualifiers last year and you have to remember we had a qualifier before we could even get into the group stage. So that in itself... And those games we were winning, which kept us just feeling OK. We weren't getting too low because of the, the some of the Premier League results. But we've got off to a great start. We've got a squad who's fully fit. All the players there uh, looking to go. I want to keep them all challenging each other, pushing each other for, for the positions. So I think it'll be a great opportunity for a few of the players to show exactly what they can do. And uh, we're going to try and... You know, compete again and go for it again if we can. We we want to be in Europe again. Uh, you know, to be in a semi final and a final two years in a row is a, a big thing in Europe. And uh, I'm going to attempt to try and do it again if we can do. And you've got a fully fit squad, as you said. Are you quite? Has it been quite a shock to have that? Just because last season was such a tough start with injuries yeah. and and to how how are you going to balance this squad? Is it, is it probably going to be a lot harder than last season because you have to think about how mm -hmm. you do that? Yeah, I think that's right. I think we've uh, we've, we've probably got more players of a, of a certain quality. You know, we we're saying we'll get more competition for places. But it's great that everybody's fit because it means that everybody's looking forward to playing. They have to show what they can do. Their opportunities will come for them in, in games. And... Uh, no, we're going to need it because we're in a we're in a really tough set of games again. And I know we I probably said that in the first group of games, but you know, as you know, when you've got Man City and Liverpool back to back Saturdays or whatever days it is, uh, that makes that a really tough tough set of fixtures. So uh, we want to play well. We want to try and get off to a good start in the group if we can. But we certainly won't be taking anything for granted, and we won't be seeing it anything other than a than uh, a really tough fixture and one that we're going to have to play well to win. Have you done any, anything differently in this pre-season just in terms of medically keeping players fit or was last year just a bit of a freak kind of year with injuries? Well, and I, think the, I think the opening part of the season, I actually think if you looked at our, uh, our injury record over probably three years, it's been fantastic. But the start of the last season was different. The start of the last season, we, we didn't get... Kirk was injured. We lost Agard in the, in the friendly at Rangers. That, that bad weather we're talking about. Uh, we, we lost it. Uh, a guard at Rangers. We were really short. We had Doss wasn't quite ready at the time, and uh, you know Isa was looking to to leave. So we we had a real problem with, with central defenders at the time, and it, it certainly affected us at the start of last season. Hi, David. Um, Thomas Suchek was saying in here a few minutes ago that he thinks this is arguably the strongest squad that West Ham have had in his time at the club and therefore in your time as well. Yeah. I'm minded of, reminded of, um, I think it was Eric Torsfett who said when Tottenham sold Gareth Bale, he said we've sold Elvis but signed the Beatles with the five or six players they, they brought in. I'm not suggesting that's there's a direct comparison after you've lost Declan, who's a hell of a player, but yeah. in the long term, do you think he might be right? And secondly, is Europe a very good stage for the players who've come in to show they are collectively the equal of sort of Declan, if you like, in, in, yeah. in value. Well, let's not forget the, what Declan gave us last year in winning a final. You know, that's the that's the thing that you mustn't take away. He was part of a team which uh, <coughs> was hugely successful. He was a captain of the team as well. So, scored some amazing goals in Europe for Declan last year. You know, some of the goals were, were brilliant. So, uh, yeah, but I think we've got, a, I think we've tried to 
maybe build a stronger whole whole round group. I think, as I mentioned to there earlier, I think the competition's good. I think we've got competition for places. Uh, we want to keep that strong. The players, the players are in a confident frame of mind at the moment. We want to keep that going as well, which comes from playing well in victories. And yeah, you know, we're looking forward to trying to have more of the ball. That's what we're planning to do. Try and get more of the ball in the games. Uh, but while we can't, then we're going to try and make sure that we're really hard to beat and continue trying to win games, no matter by hook or by crook, how that happens. And just uh, secondly for me, um, I think you said after the Chelsea game that you regard yourself as having two number ones now with Fabianski yeah. and Ariola. Last season, Ariola played in Europe. Is it, the, yeah. is it the plan to give Fab a, a go tomorrow night to yeah. keep him, keep Lu his hand in? Lucas Fabianski will play tomorrow night, yeah. And uh, yeah, Lucas has, has been a brilliant goalkeeper and as I said at the time, has done very little wrong. Uh, to be out the side but we felt that I had to make a decision I brought Fonz here a while ago to um, sort of said that he would he would eventually move uh, move in front of Lucas Lucas form has been so so good for the last few years it's been hard to do that but uh, we made that decision and uh, that's it so Lucas yeah I'll be in goal tomorrow night thank you hi, hi David um, back to Paul I'll confess I don't know too much about them but as the opposing manager, does that make it more difficult for you guys when you're going up against someone that's lesser known than a Olympiakos or a Freud? Yeah, yeah, it does to an extent because you know it's actually a bit harder to get footage off them and a bit harder to get levels of games which you could maybe compare and give yourself an idea of the standard. But look, they're a side who've uh, had a very good record. I think they've they've done well at the start of this season as well, and we'll try and get as much information as we possibly can and give the players that which we have done but you're right in, in saying that you know it's not an easy thing to do is to get uh, to get all the information on on a, in a on a team from Serbia but uh, a job to do so and we're looking forward to playing them and looking forward to going there as well I was going to say because I think <coughs> Thomas mentioned that the sort of players are getting sent individual footage to study it's almost like giving them homework so that there's yeah. no surprises is that just is that normal? Is that yeah, it's normal for us. We try to... I think it's different when you're playing... No, we, we play Liverpool at the weekend. Of course, you know most of the Liverpool team, but I think when you're playing teams from Europe who maybe you're, you're not seeing the players, you maybe don't know them, you don't know them maybe from international games or etc. I think we'll try to give the players as much information and detail on them as possible. And the, It's a weird one. I don't want to get you in trouble by talking about the referee, but do you have to study the referees as well? Because we've had a few different... Yeah. From watching you in Europe over the last few years, they have different styles when very much so, and you have to study them as well. Yeah, it's something which we've we've had to come accustomed to. You know, I mean, it, we we talk a lot about the the tolerance levels with the referees. What you know, we don't know what. You know, we we roughly have an idea of what in the Premier League what we're going to get. You know, when sometimes quite often we say we don't know what we're going to get, but you've got an idea normally on the tolerance levels on on challenges etc cetera, etc. Cetera. You're not sure at all, and you know things which we think oh, that's just a yell. You might find that the overseas referees are given red cards for that in their countries and would continue to do that. Uh, so it is every every game is a is a little bit of a minefield with with trying to think about the levels of the referees and what you might have to deal with but it's also a challenge as well and I think we we said that I think after the semi-final at Frankfurt I'd said I think hopefully we've all learned a little bit about it how we keep our emotions in place but you know in both games I think we had players sent off just about in both games didn't we certainly in in the first game Crazy went off did he was it first game second game as well no just the first game second game yeah so uh, so there were things which you have to try and learn and uh, in the main we've done it m mostly pretty well last season. David, an another question on Batchka Topola. I mean, you mentioned there that it's difficult sometimes to seek out footage of these sorts of teams. Typically in, in Serbia there are two large teams the, from the capital, Red, uh, Red Star Belgrade and Partizan Belgrade. Yeah. They came second last season, um, Batchka Topola, and I think they're top of the league in yeah. their last five. It's a compliment to them really that, that you're even having to seek out footage of them, isn't it? Yeah, but it's also a compliment to them that, that you know, they've got themselves in this situation. And look, we've watched they played Braga in the, in the Champions League qualifier. We've watched both the games of that, which would give us a better idea maybe of the levels, which I'm saying some of the games maybe uh, 
internally might not be give us the best idea of what we're up against, but certainly the, the games against Braga gave us an idea. Uh, but you're right, they, they've started the season really well and they're, you know, to be in that, in the position they've been in is very good. I'll have to speak up a little bit for this second question. <laughs> These are all going to get soaked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, obviously, excellent start to the um, Premier League season for, for your team, which wasn't the case last season when you had the Europa Conference League. Um, two of the wins in particular, um, Chelsea and, and Brighton, it was, it's fair to say that the opponents in those games were the teams that dominate in possession. That might be a bit different in this competition. So it, mm -hmm. is, it, is there a case, potentially, that this competition isn't just a new tournament for you, it's also a new challenge as well, tactically? Yeah, I think, that we're, I think tactically we've done a pretty good job over two years. You know, two years ago we got to semi-final and lost in the semi-final against in the, this competition. Uh, last year we were in the conference, the one down from it, and we tactically we've done very well. I've got to say we found some of the teams incredibly good, very good with the ball. The Danish teams were excellent, I have to say, and as we went along with the Dutch team, which was excellent in the semi-final, then we end up with an Italian team in the final. So I think we've ended up finding ourselves uh, coming through all those challenges pretty well over the, over the last few years. So hopefully we'll gain a little bit of experience from it. But I think every time you enter this competition, it's a challenge. You know, there's a but lot of good things to see. Particularly in the group stage, like potentially dominating possession more than you maybe would in the Premier League. Yeah, we, we may do. I think I have to say, I think we've got some tough opponents in Freiburg and Olympiakos as well. But yeah, I'm hoping that there'll be parts of the game we'll get a lot more possession and going forward in the Premier League. That's what we're hoping to do as well. But I would give it up if I was going to keep getting the results I was getting, that's for sure. OK, best of luck. Thank you. Uh, David, would it be fair to say you have a, a selection headache in de in defence because you got a good and Kazuma performed a solid defensive partnership. Mm -hmm. Bono was great against Brighton. Yeah. And Apanos is fully fit now. Yeah, yeah. No, we ha we have. It's com it said competition. So you you're right. We've uh, we've got good competition. Uh, Angelo played really well at Brighton. Uh, in Caravisa they've started. Naive came back and he's gone back into the side. So we've got. Got competition. Dean Oss is just getting himself ready now and uh, and played for his national team last week. So good. Everybody fits a great thing and uh, gives us an opportunity to to see what we can do. Since winning the Conference League, has has life changed for you much? Do you get recognised a lot more now? Yeah, uh, you know, I wouldn't say I get recognised anymore. I'd, but I've got to say, there's an inner glow about me because I know that getting that victory means so much, and and I'm I'm pleased to have that. You know, carry that with me now. Uh, I hope I can do it again. I really do. I want to try it again because of the the magic feeling, the moment when it happened, the aftermath, what it meant to so many people in, in East End of London and West Ham supporters in particular. So it was a great moment, and uh, you know, to be to be fortunate enough to win a European trophy is not something which uh, happens every day. Just affecting on that night. How nice was it to do it in front of your dad and also your family as well? Oh. Magical because we, you know, you get a chance to. They've been to hundreds and hundreds of games, but it's probably been I've been walking out a miserable bugger, you know, and and uh, you know, you know, not wanting to speak, not wanting to go out for a drink, not wanting to go for dinner, you know. So, they are they are the lows of football as well. But then you get the bit what you notice is the highs of of a win and being able to happen to you know my family was there. You would expect probably a final anyway, to be able to have them there and part of it. Was uh, was magnificent and really just you know to get the chance to get to a final and, and do that because as I say the job has an awful lot of lows through it and a lot of defeats in your career and uh, you know having to get up and go again after them and your family as well so great great that they've supported me so well. Last question for me. I know you get asked all the time, but is there any update on the Ingall situation? Not really. No, we're keeping them training and. Uh, Joined training today as well, so we're, uh, he's certainly certainly getting much more like the Jesse, I think, in physical capabilities than he was, you know, when we got him in four weeks ago. Hi, Hi there. Hi, Lola Hernandez for Sport Mexico. Uh, Edson Alvarez is okay; it's suspended. Uh, but uh, what do you think about uh, his performance the last uh, game, and what Edson Alvarez giving to the to the team? Thank you. His performance has been really good. Uh, I think, I think we probably were weaker when he came off. He came off after about seventy minutes. But I think him, him getting used to the intensity of the Premier League, 
what's required. And I think he's found it in all the games. You know, he's been he's played really well in the games. He's helped us on the ball. He's helped us defensively. Uh, I think the bigger thing though is him getting used to having to do that for the ninety minutes has been has been tough. But I have to say, he also had a tough week last week. He was away with Mexico. He had two games for the national team. And he only got back Thursday afternoon about three o'clock. The time he got in, I think his flight was delayed coming back. So MD who's been across to Mexico or the American side will tell you the jet lag coming back is really difficult for players to get ready and have, the, have ready. So the game being Saturday at three o'clock in, in some ways didn't help him, but he'd done a great job. And we certainly missed him when we went off, but uh, he had already had a booking and also uh, he was cramping and fatiguing, so we always knew it was going to be difficult for him. Okay. Hi. Um, James Ward Prowse is always going to be a talisman for West Ham, but are you surprised just how well he's hit the ground running? Was he always going to be? <laughs> was he? Yeah, well I, that, well, I believe that he was going to be, and I always think that he will be. I think that uh, he added things to to Southampton, which were terrific, whether it be uh, you know, scoring goals, whether it be making goals. So I hoped that if we could transfer that from there to us, then it would give us some, some options as well. He uh, can play several different roles in midfield for us. You know, uh, I think he's just been a, been a good steady, steady signing at the moment, getting his goals, his helping, getting his assists. Because there's a bit when you sign them, you're saying maybe, you know, will we get them here? Well, I always thought that we, we've been a side who've been, over the years, not bad at set pieces. So if we could get a really, really top deliverer, then it would maybe make us even more potent. And uh, he's also somebody, you know, if we can get free kicks around the edge of the box, we've not been getting many at the moment, but if we could get any, or he's added a couple of open play goals already, the one at Brighton and then the one at the weekend. So I have to say he's been a, he's been a great Great sort of start to his West Ham career, and I hope I hope we can continue the levels he's at. And what do you think Mohamed Kudus can bring that's different to what you've already got at West Ham? I think he brings a lot of what we've got, and it's adding to I think his ability on the ball, strength on the ball. Uh, he can score. We certainly can do that as well. So I'm hoping that we're bringing we're bringing someone else who's going to make us play, make you no know, improve on things which I would like to do. Uh, but I don't want it to take away from what we've got, uh, what our strengths are as well. I want him to add to it, and I think he will do. I think he's got so much ability. And uh, you know, he might just take a little bit more time than others, but if you look, it took me that last year to get Lucas Paqueta, you know, Nathan Agard. took them all a little bit of time to get to the levels we hoped and they could get to. Okay, can I just check, please? Um, um, Man City parade or Champions League trophy out for the before kickoff last night. Uh, do you know plans for West Ham to do the same or we did that before the Chelsea game, didn't we? So or of course yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I might do it again.